There's this new Drake Tank Volley Bear build where you heal upwards of 1,000 plus HP with every bite and become this unkillable monster. It's so strong in Korea right now that even pro players like KT's Perfect or DRX Rascal are trying it, but it's actually foolproof for solo queue, so here's exactly how it works. The problem with the AP Volley build is it's very snowball dependent. If you make a mistake or can't snowball, you're pretty much dead in the water, and actually, Volley can be a very strong tank option. He has decent enough engage with his ult and Q, especially after the buffs he's just received to the move speed on his Q in patch 14.4. The entire build revolves around the synergies between three items in Ingenious Hunter and Volley's kit. His W has an enormous 20% missing health heal on it if you can double chomp someone at max rank, and his E gives him a percent health shield and percent health damage, making him perfect as both tank and anti-tank, which is insane. Spirit Visage boosts the heals and shields of both these abilities, but also boosts the healing of Unending Despair and the shields from Fimble Winter. That alone is a nice combo, but where it gets really broken is when you add in Ingenious Hunter. Ingenious Hunter reduces the cooldown of your item actives with each stack, and that applies to both Unending Despair and Fimble Winter. As soon as you hit max stacks, Fimble Winter's cooldown becomes lower than your Q at every rank and full build, basically adding another shield ability into your kit. Unending Despair's cooldown gets reduced from 7 seconds to every 5 seconds, which is great and does allow you to survive for a very long time, but the glue that ties it all together is the Spirit Visage. With Spirit Visage, you can stand under tower like this, forever. The heal is just that large and happens that often. Obviously, this isn't a very realistic in-game experience, but it highlights the power spikes each item gives you. So you're constantly rotating between heals and shields whilst also having tank stats and a considerable health bar. And what's more, this build is unbelievably cheap, especially when comparing it to the current meta top laners you might be chomping, which effectively means that kills are kind of more impactful to you and missing CS is technically less detrimental. Basically, it's consistently easy to pull off without needing much to go in your favor, which is perfect for solo queue. And that's without adding in your W's missing health heal and your E's percent health shield, which also have their own near perfect rotations with this build. At max rank, your W's cooldown is just over three seconds, so the core build combo is to start with a W and E straight afterwards so that the shield lands and guarantees the second chomp an insane heal. But conveniently, this is also a perfect loop. For roughly every two chomps you do, your E's back off cooldown, notwithstanding the shields you're getting off your Q with Thimble Winter and the heals you're getting from Unending Despair. For runes, Grasp is extremely efficient for you since Volley can proc it with his Q, W or Autos and because you don't have much additional damage and take towers very slowly with this build, you take Demolish which also happens to scale with your health. Second Wind boosts your early trading and Revitalize doesn't really need an explanation. Taste of Blood actually procs off your passive and gives you even more healing and we've already spoken about Ingenious Hunter. You want to take the CDR shard so that you can heal and shield more often with your abilities and double health scaling shards since that basically buffs the heal on your W and the shield on your E. For summoners, Ghost TP gives you the most oppressive amount of sticking power. You can just run away from most threats with Q Ghost if you need to and your ult does let you jump over walls as an escape anyway. For boots, the obvious choice is Lucidity Boots. Not only does that mean you stack your tier faster in lane, but also that you get the heals and shields from your abilities more often. But ultimately, you are a tank and building a tanky shoe is not going to hurt your groove. Start the game with a D-Ring, you can start D-Shield into ranged matchups, but it's honestly not always that advantageous. Your first move is to start E and hit all six minions in the wave and walk into the middle of it. This is one hell of a power move. You create a zone your laner can't walk into and the minions take damage and start the push. You also get a shield, which means you basically win any short trade afterwards, so you're almost always going to have an uncontested threat on the wave and are more than likely going to get level 2 first. Leveling up your Q next gives you the most threat possible. If your laner stays in the danger zone for any time whatsoever, you have the chance to stun them and guarantee Sky Splitter's damage, but you also have the option to put them in a lose-lose situation by positioning your E behind them and using your Q to run at them. If they move backwards, they take damage from the E. If they move forwards, you stun them and hit them with autos. Level 3 basically opens up the rest of the game for you. Your W is the perfect extended trading tool for obvious reasons, so in the instance your opponent brings the fight to you, so long as you can stick it out through at least two chomps, you're more than likely going to win the fight. Not to mention the 50% increased damage any 
many subsequent chomps have. Failing that, you can always double chomp a minion for 50% of the healing and an uncomfortable amount of in-lane sustain. From level 3 onwards, the trading pattern continues to increase in potency, since all that happens from level to level is you get more healing on your W, and all that happens from item to item is you get more healing and shielding generally. Your ult does have some interesting interactions in that it's a very strong diving tool, which somehow people still seem to forget quite often, but the leap is also a great way to get into the center of the enemy team and get the maximum heal possible from unending despair, and you also have crowd control immunity during the jump animation which gives you great outplay potential. The only other thing to really mention here is to use your downtime efficiently and first back by a tier. Top lane is hard enough to gank as it is in Season 14, and you can make that borderline impossible simply by warding your opponent's jungle in times where you have nothing to do in lane. The longer it takes you to get Thimble Winter from Winter's Approach, the weaker you are across the game, so getting tier on a very early first back is also essential. But the synergies do not stop there. Rounding out your build with an Abyssal Mask reduces nearby enemies' magic resist and gives you MR as well, so obviously the use case of this is suited to when both your own and the enemy's team is heavily AP. But it also has a secret perfect synergy with Unending Despair. Unending Despair's heal is proportional to 250% of its magic damage, which is increased by Abyssal Mask's MR Shred passive, and so by extension increases its healing. Iceborne Gauntlet is great when you're in need of armor. Just like Grasp, you can use the Sheen proc with your Q, Auto, and W, and it gives you even more sticking power with its on-hit slow. Technically, Ingenious Hunter does reduce its cooldown, but it's so low anyway you probably wouldn't really notice. Anathema's Chains is such a sleeper OP item generally, but you can also go at first into range matchups since it's got flat damage reduction, and the negative tenacity means they have far fewer opportunities to escape. The biggest downside being it delays that drain tank core. Zonya's, shockingly, can also be a decent pickup last item. The stats on it are ideal for giving him both armor and AP, which he already uses pretty effectively, and overall it's an extremely gold efficient item. If the stasis effect is timed correctly, you can also get another unending despair proc off, and it easily leaves enough time to get your W's cooldown back. The only piece of guidance being that you only really want to build this if you can build Seekers first. Don't bother if you can't take that build part. And Kainik Rukern is fantastic against AP poke comps. You can tank their poke in lane, take a step back, regen the shield, and return to maintain the push. And that's pretty much it. This build has come out of Korea pretty quickly, especially given Volley's recent buffs. It will more than likely start making its way into the meta at large. So it's even more necessary to point out the Korean originator of this build, whose YouTube channel is linked in the description below. <laughs> please subscribe to him. All that's left now is to thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please let us know in the comments. We love hearing from you guys about what you think we can do better and what you think we already do best. And until then, good luck and have fun.